Come on in. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're taking a look at the worst episodes in Survivor history, as determined by IMDb user ratings. Fans have long debated the best episodes in Survivor history, but what about the worst? Survivors had 500 plus great episodes, but when you've got nearly 700 episodes under your belt, well, you can't bat a thousand. Weird reunions, bad twists, awkward editing, the show fumbling the ball on real-world issues, Survivors had some not-so-great episodes over the years, and the big brains over at the Internet Movie Database have democratically ranked every single episode via individual user ratings. As we're about to see, sometimes they get it right, and sometimes they do not. Today, I thought it would be fun to look at the 10 episodes IMDb users have rated the worst. Along the way, I'll say why I think these episodes in particular are rated poorly, and give my thoughts on whether I think they are bottom 10 of all time. Last week, we looked at the best episodes in Survivor history as rated by IMDb users. Now it's time to take a look at the worst Survivor episodes ever according to the users at the Internet Movie Database. At number 10 is Back From Africa, episode 16 of Survivor Africa. This is probably a special you didn't even know existed. It's not on Paramount+, Plus, and it can only be legally viewed by trying to watch the Africa reunion on Amazon Prime, where it was accidentally uploaded as that. My guess is episode raiders had no idea what the heck this is and just gave it a zero. And yeah, I don't really need to see what Jesse Camacho and Diane Ogden are up to after Survivor. This follows in the footsteps of a similar special for Survivor Australia, which may have the most poorly aged segment on the history of this show. This post-reunion episode similarly catches up with each player from Africa to see what they're up to now and how Survivor impacted their life. It's largely unremarkable, but there are three segments of note here. Kelly's is genuinely entertaining. I'd watch a full hour of her just maniacally running around her apartment showing off her crochet projects. Where was she on All Stars? Brandon talks about representing the gay community on such a massive platform, and Kim Johnson's segment is mostly dedicated to her thong, her son and son-in-law dropping some curious quotes about it. All of a sudden, the thong was out there, and the place went crazy. We've seen quite a bit of it. More than most son-in-laws get to see of their mother-in-law, so that's that's been a big plus, too. A big plus? Overall, probably the least essential episode of Survivor in history, a premise the show probably agrees with, considering it's not even on Paramount Plus and only viewable on Amazon by accident. At number 9 is the Marquesas Reunion, episode 15 of Survivor Marquesas. The first of several reunion episodes we're going to see, I personally could not disagree more. This is not a bottom 10 episode of Survivor. In fact, it's a top 1 reunion episode. It's high camp through and through, as actual Survivor fan Rosie O'Donnell takes over hosting duties from Bryant Gumbel, who couldn't even be bothered to learn the players' names. And Ethan Zorn, now millionaire. It starts with Colby bringing Rosie in on a Harley, it goes into a song and dance tune, and it closes with her blindfolding the players and making them eat gummy worms for a new car. It's an insane trip. Probst would permanently take over reunion hosting duties after this one, but Rosie's a genuinely good reunion host. She's in control, her questions are good, and she lets each player have their moment. The low rating here is probably just anti-Rosie sentiment, and... Yeah, that's fair, but I think this does deserve a reevaluation as a fun artifact of Survivor history. The theater kid energy is off the charts. At number 8 is Do or Die, episode 11 of Survivor 41. I don't think I'd have this in the top 10 worst episodes ever, but I definitely would if the Do or Die twist actually went through. Do or Die is widely regarded as one of the most misguided twists of all time. 
where players could opt into the immunity challenge, but the first one out would put themselves at a 1 in 3 chance of just randomly being eliminated from the game at Tribal Council. The looming do or die twist threatens to undo what is otherwise a fun afternoon of survivor strategy, with the majority alliance discussing voting out Liana, but Erica and Xander considering a flip to take out Ricard. Very cool that it might not at all matter and Deshaun could just go home by opening the wrong box. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention another reason this episode might be here, though. At Tribal, Deshaun, Liana, and Danny all open up about representing the black community, and just the faintest whiff of any sort of conversations about social justice or representation is enough to give some people a case of the vapors. Yeah, I miss early Survivor, where they definitely didn't talk about socio-political issues at all, ever. At number 7 is Ready to Play Like a Lion, episode 6 of Survivor 41. This is probably my least favorite episode of 41, an episode which grinds the season to a halt just as it's gaining momentum. The JD and Genie boots preceding this episode were both fantastic episodes of Survivor where relationship dynamics and difficult decisions were center stage. Can I interest you in a frustrating no-brainer twist where no one even goes home at the end of the episode? This is the first of the two-part Hourglass Twist episode, where the Merge Tribe is split in two to compete in an immunity challenge, the winners exile Erica, and she's given the choice to keep things as they are, where the losing tribe lost and she's vulnerable for elimination, or break the hourglass, go back in time, and make the losers the winners, making herself immune in the process. It's a misguided twist front to back, who would choose no immunity over immunity? But the decision to end the episode on a cliffhanger as we wait for Erica's decision is mind-boggling and just stops the season dead in its tracks. And frankly, it never truly recovers from this lost momentum. Jeff has admitted the hourglass went too far, and this episode just represents the worst excesses of the new era, which has thankfully largely course-corrected itself by now. Still, some things never leave you. I mean, we're still breaking hourglasses on site five seasons later, just in case. At number six is the reunion of Survivor Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers. I'm glad to see this reunion get its due as a stinker. It's outranked by only one other reunion, and no, it's not the one you think, but this is the shortest episode in Survivor history, running just shy of 15 minutes. This reunion is so short that Jeff doesn't even bother sitting down for half of it. We hear a decent amount from our final three, but the only other person who gets to speak is Lauren, and that's just used to segue into a promo for Ghost Island. I do like the reunion of Ben with his marine friends. This would be a heartwarming segment if the rest of the reunion wasn't so rushed. But overall, the Survivor fans over at IMDb have got this one right. This is one of Survivor's worst reunions ever, and it was only toppled by. At number five is the reunion of Survivor, Ghost Island. Another reunion in air quotes here, this one is just a minute longer than the reunion for Triple H, clocking in at 16 minutes. Personally, I prefer this to several other bad reunions like Karamoan, but I still don't like it, and neither do most fans. Again, we only talk to a handful of the cast. The final three, Chris, Kellen, Michael Yerger for some reason, and as if they haven't been through enough over the years, Eric and James are trotted out to get dunked on again as the dumbest survivors ever, and Eric's body language says it all. He's either under contractual obligation to be here, or he has a humiliation kink. Then, to close things out, Kevin Hart shows up to promote the latest CBS summer game show Crapperama, TKO, which lasted 10 episodes. Reunion time well spent. At number 4 is Game of Chicken, episode 9 of Survivor 42. <sighs> this is where I start to regret making this list. 
This is the final 10 split tribal episode of 42, where Roxroy and Tori are voted out. On one side, Roxroy is unanimously voted out for being Roxroy. And on the other side, Tori is voted out when Marianne and Drea both play their idols. Jonathan's immune. So only Lindsay and Tori are eligible for votes. And most of Lindsay's close allies are in this group. If you haven't watched 42 in a while, you're probably wondering what the problem with this episode is. And, well, Marianne and Drea talk about how seeing Chanel and Roxroy as the first two members of the jury means they're not voting for one another because they don't want to see three black people go out back to back to back. It's a moment bigger than the game where everyone, including Tori, leaves feeling that the conversation was difficult but powerful and constructive. So naturally, it's been rated low by hundreds of people. I wouldn't have this anywhere near the bottom 100 episodes of Survivor when entire seasons like Thailand and Island of the Idols exist, but if I could tepidly offer some pushback on it, I do think that even as important conversations are happening on Survivor, rules should be rules. So I don't love Marianne and Drea playing idols before they're able to, or the vocal vote for Tori. Everyone is entitled to a private ballot. Except Jeff Varner. At number three is We Made It to the Merge, episode eight of Survivor Island of the Idols. You know it, you hate it, we don't have to spend much time here. This is the merge episode of Island of the Idols, my personal worst episode of Survivor ever, the episode where this entire season is irredeemably ruined in the one two punch of Kelly and Jamal going out over Kelly's harasser, Dan. Dan would later be removed by production from the game just before the finale, but the specter of Kelly getting voted out over him lingers over the rest of the season like a dark cloud. Even when the season tepidly dips into almost fun territory, the Dan stank just won't come out. At number two is one thing left to do, win. The finale of Survivor 41. A slightly controversial finale to a somewhat controversial season, but for me, this is pretty solid Survivor. Final challenge is good, fire making is entertaining, Final Tribal had some good push and pull, and Erica's win is deserved, even if her edit only picked up in the fourth quarter. The low ratings here are definitely a reflection of the Xander was robbed contingent of fans. The show really propped him up as a contender when on the island. He had no agency and was not taken seriously as a player. I think you can reasonably argue that this episode is bad for a perceived failure to explain Erica's win, and that making Xander the narrator of the season was a bad idea in hindsight, considering he stood no chance walking into Final Tribal. But, uh, not all of the arguments in the user reviews are so reasonable in their criticism. Is this a bottom 10 episode? No, not for me. It's not even a bottom 10 finale. Any episode where someone sincerely gets a weepy backstory package where their story is that they were slightly chubby then they hit puberty can't be all bad. That's simply too funny. The worst episode of Survivor of all time according to IMDb user ratings is A New Era the premiere of Survivor 41. The least favorite episode of guys whose profile pic is a close-up selfie of them wearing sunglasses in a truck, you probably saw this one coming by now. There's no reason this premiere in particular would be rated so poorly other than the obvious. Ricard asking Jeff to drop guys from Come On In Guys and Jeff agreeing. I don't agree that we should use the word guys. Huh. I fully agree that we should change it whether it just be dropping the guys, changing it to something else, I just don't really agree with it. You can agree with that or you can disagree, but if you're still mad, please consider a hobby. We are four years removed from this season and Survivor's social media comments are still filled with people ranting and raving about this change. You'd think most of these people would have been advised by their doctor not to raise their blood pressure any higher. Looking at the actual merits of this episode, this is a solid if somewhat jarring premiere. 
new era hallmarks like Sweat vs. Savvy, Losing Your Vote, Shot in the Dark, and Journeys all make their debut right here. And it is admittedly a little strange to see a Survivor's format fiddled with so much right out of the gate. But with the benefit of hindsight, and knowing how the kinks would be ironed out in the future, this isn't so bad. And these have all actually earned their keep for me. The tonal shift to extreme sincerity and emotional backstory packages might seem strange if you watched it now for the first time, but I'd argue that in the time and place it premiered, after what we'd all been through with COVID, the focus on emotion made sense at the time. Overall though, we all know why we're here. And it isn't us getting robbed of more Abraham. There you have it, the 10 worst episodes in Survivor history, according to IMDb user ratings. Personally, I'd agree with a handful, but some of these are just objectively silly choices. But now I want to know what you think. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? And what are your least favorite episodes? Hit me with those bad deep cuts that didn't make this list. But keep it respectful. Don't make me smash the hourglass and go back in time to never make this video. Got nothing else for ya. If this video made you as happy as Rosie O'Donnell at a Survivor reunion, like and subscribe and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.